Have you ever marveled at the intricacy of a spider's web? Each delicate strand woven together with purpose and precision. The spider doesn't question the design or doubt the process. It simply follows its God-given instincts, trusting in the path laid out before it. In the same way, when we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, we can trust that every strand of our lives is being carefully crafted into something beautiful, even when we can't see the final picture. Today, I will explore the transformative power of allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in every aspect of your life. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends, in Galatians 5, verse 16, the Apostle Paul writes, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This scripture reminds us that when we choose to walk in the Spirit, we allow the Holy Spirit to guide our steps and direct our paths. We find the strength to resist the temptations of the flesh and pursue the things that honor God. As the Holy Spirit leads us, we will examine God's Word and discover how surrendering to the Holy Spirit can bring clarity, purpose, and abundant blessings. Now, let us explore walking in the Spirit as the path to an abundant life. My dear friends, walking in the Spirit is not just a suggestion, it is a command from our Heavenly Father. When we choose to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, we open ourselves up to a life of abundance, purpose, and joy. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans 8, verses 5 to 6, saying, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. My friends, understand that when we walk in the flesh, we are consumed by our own desires and passions. We become slaves to the things of this world, chasing after temporary pleasures that leave us feeling empty and unfulfilled. But when we walk in the Spirit, we find true freedom and satisfaction. We discover that the things of God bring a peace and contentment that the world can never offer. Think about the life of Moses, a man who walked closely with God and allowed the Holy Spirit to guide his every step. When God called Moses to lead the Israelites out of slavery, in Egypt, Moses could have easily doubted his ability to fulfill such a daunting task. But instead of relying on his own strength and understanding, Moses trusted in the leading of the Holy Spirit. In Exodus 33, verse 15, Moses declares to God, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Moses understood that without the presence and guidance of the Holy Spirit, he would be lost and helpless. He knew that the only way to succeed in the mission God had given him was to walk in step with the Spirit. And because of his obedience and trust in God, Moses became one of the greatest leaders in history, guiding the Israelites to the Promised Land and leaving a legacy of faith that endures to this day. My friends, the same is true for us today. When we choose to walk in the Spirit, we are choosing to follow the path that God has laid out for us. We are choosing to trust in His wisdom and guidance, even when the way seems unclear or difficult. The prophet Jeremiah reminds us in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God's plans for us are always good, always perfect, 
and always meant for our ultimate benefit. When we surrender our lives to the leading of the Holy Spirit, we can trust that every step we take is ordered by the Lord. We can have confidence that He will guide us into the future that He has prepared for us, a future filled with hope, peace, and abundance. But walking in the Spirit is not always easy, is it? There will be times when the path ahead seems daunting, when the challenges we face feel overwhelming. In those moments, it can be tempting to rely on our own strength and understanding to try to navigate life's difficulties on our own. But my dear friends, that is precisely when we need the Holy Spirit the most. In John 14, verse 26, Jesus promises, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Spirit is our helper, our comforter, and our guide. He is the one who leads us into all truth, who reminds us of God's promises, and who gives us the strength we need to persevere. When we feel weak, the Holy Spirit is our strength. When we feel lost, the Holy Spirit is our compass. When we feel alone, the Holy Spirit is our constant companion. So how do we cultivate a life that is led by the Spirit? It begins with surrender, with a willingness to lay down our own plans and desires and submit to God's perfect will. It means spending time in God's presence, seeking His face through prayer and meditation on His Word. As we draw near to God, He promises to draw near to us, filling us with His Spirit and guiding us along the path of righteousness. Let us now look at the fruit of the Spirit as evidence of a Spirit-led life. My friends, when we walk in the Spirit, our lives begin to bear fruit that reflects the character of Christ. In Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23, Paul describes the fruit of the Spirit. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. These qualities are not something we can manufacture on our own. They are the natural outpouring of a life that is surrendered to the Holy Spirit. When we allow the Spirit to work in us and through us, we find ourselves growing in love, joy, peace, and all the other attributes that mark a true disciple of Christ. Take, for example, the story of the Apostle Peter. Before he encountered the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, Peter was impulsive, quick-tempered, and prone to fear. He even denied knowing Jesus three times on the night of his crucifixion. But after the Holy Spirit fell upon the disciples at Pentecost, Peter was forever changed. He became a bold and courageous witness for Christ, preaching the gospel with power and conviction. In Acts 4, verse 13, the scripture says, Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. The transformation in Peter's life was so dramatic that even his enemies took notice. They could see that he had been with Jesus, that the Holy Spirit had taken hold of his life and was working through him in mighty ways. And the same can be true for us, my dear friends. When we yield ourselves to the leading of the Spirit, our lives will bear witness to the transforming power of God's grace. But the fruit of the Spirit is not just for our own benefit. It is meant to be a blessing to others as well. As we grow in love, 
joy, peace, and all the other qualities that reflect Christ's character, we become a living testimony to the goodness and faithfulness of God. We become a light in a dark world, pointing others to the hope and salvation that can only be found in Jesus. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Philippians 2 verses 14 to 15, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. When we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, we become a beacon of hope and truth in a world that is desperate for answers. We become a living example of what it means to follow Christ, to walk in His ways and reflect His love to those around us. And as we shine the light of Christ into the darkness, we have the privilege of participating in God's great plan of redemption, drawing others to Him and expanding His kingdom on earth. So, my friends, let us commit ourselves to walking in the Spirit each and every day. Let us surrender our lives to His leading, trusting that He will guide us into all truth and use us for His glory. And let us pray that we will be empowered to live a life that bears much fruit and brings honor to our Heavenly Father. Let us be reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul, in Ephesians 5, verses 18 to 21, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. May this be our prayer and our heart's desire to be filled with the Spirit and to walk in His ways all the days of our lives. For when we do, we will experience the abundant life that Jesus promised, a life filled with purpose, joy, and the unshakable peace that comes from knowing we are in the center of God's perfect will. And now let us turn our attention to the power of surrender and letting the Holy Spirit take control. My dear friends, surrendering to the Holy Spirit can be a challenging concept for many of us. We live in a world that tells us to be in control, to rely on our own strength, and abilities in order to navigate the ups and downs of life. But the truth is, when we try to do things in our own power, we will always fall short. We will always find ourselves struggling and striving, never quite able to attain the peace and fulfillment we so desperately crave. That's why surrender is so crucial to a life that is led by the Spirit. When we surrender our lives to God, we are acknowledging that He is the one who is truly in control. We are choosing to trust in His wisdom and goodness, even when we can't see the full picture or understand His plans. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, we are reminded, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Surrendering to the Holy Spirit means letting go of our own agenda and embracing God's perfect will for our lives. It means being willing to follow His leading, even when it takes us outside of our comfort zone or challenges us to grow in new ways. And when we do, we find that His plans for us are always better than anything we could have come up with on our own. Take, for example, the life of the Apostle Paul. Before his conversion, 
Paul was a zealous persecutor of the church. Convinced that he was doing the right thing by stamping out this new movement of believers, but when Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus, Paul's life was forever changed. He surrendered his life to Christ and allowed the Holy Spirit to guide him in a completely new direction. In Acts 20, verse 24, Paul declares, But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Paul's surrender to the Holy Spirit led him on a journey he never could have imagined, preaching the gospel throughout the known world and writing much of what we now know as the New Testament. His life is a powerful example of what can happen when we let go of our own plans and allow the Spirit to take control. But surrender is not a one-time event. It is a daily choice to put our lives in God's hands and trust in His leading. Each day, we must make the decision to die to ourselves and follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus says in Luke 9, verse 23, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Denying ourselves means putting God's will above our own, even when it's difficult or uncomfortable. It means being willing to lay down our own desires and ambitions and follow the path that he has laid out for us. And as we do, we find that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. We discover a freedom and joy that can only be found in a life that is fully surrendered to him. So, my friends, let us make the daily choice to surrender our lives to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let us put our trust in God's goodness and faithfulness, knowing that He will guide us into all truth and use us for His glory. And let us pray for the courage and strength to follow His leading, even when the way seems uncertain or difficult. My friends, let us reflect on the words of Jesus in John 16, verse 13. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. The Holy Spirit is our guide, our comforter, and our friend. He is the one who leads us into all truth and empowers us to live a life that honors God. So let us open our hearts to His leading, surrender our lives to His control, and watch in amazement as He works in us and through us in ways we never could have imagined. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, my rock, my strong tower, and my Redeemer, I come before you with a heart full of praise, thanksgiving, and adoration. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who sees and knows all things, both visible and invisible. You are the Good Shepherd who guides us, the Prince of Peace who calms our fears, and the Bread of Life who sustains us. You are the Light of the World, the Hope of the Nations, and the Savior of our souls. Your Majesty and Glory fills the heavens and the earth. Who is like you, O Lord? I bow before you in humble reverence acknowledging your sovereignty over every aspect of my life. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit 
my constant companion and guide. I am grateful for your loving kindness and tender mercies that are new every morning. I thank you for my daily provisions and blessings. Forgive me, Father, for my sins and shortcomings. Forgive me for the times I have strayed from your path and relied on my own understanding. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness and help me to walk in your ways. As I have received your forgiveness, I also forgive those who have trespassed against me, releasing all bitterness, anger, and resentment. Strengthen me, Lord, to overcome temptation and guide me in your truth. Teach me to love as you love, to forgive as you forgive, and to live a life that honors you. Lord, I surrender my life to the leading of the Holy Spirit, trusting in your perfect plan for my days. Help me to walk in the Spirit, moment by moment, step by step, as I navigate the challenges and joys of this life. Grant me the courage to follow your promptings, even when the way seems uncertain or difficult. I declare that I will not be led by the desires of my flesh, but by the gentle whispers of your Spirit within me. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of fear, doubt, and unbelief that seeks to hinder my walk with you. I rebuke the enemy's attempts to lead me astray or distract me from your purpose for my life. I declare that I am more than a conqueror through Christ, who loves me. In the name of Jesus, I claim victory over every obstacle and challenge that stands in the way of the abundant life you have promised. Lord, I pray for a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit, that I may bear much fruit for your glory. Cultivate in me the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let my life be a living testimony of your transforming power, drawing others to the hope that is found in you alone. Lord, I call upon your mighty power to bring complete healing to every area of my life. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed, and I trust in your power to restore me fully. Let your healing touch, heal, every cell, tissue, organ, and system in my body, renewing my strength and vitality. In the name of Jesus, I declare healing over every area of brokenness in my life. I stand in faith, believing that your miraculous power is at work within me, bringing wholeness, renewal, and peace. Mighty God, surround me with your shield of protection, guarding me against the attacks of the enemy. Deliver me from every snare and trap that has been set against me and lead me in the path of righteousness. Lord, cover me under your mighty wings and let no plague come near my dwelling place as I trust in your steadfast care. Watch over my coming and going and keep me safe from all the wicked devices of the enemy. Let your angels encamp around me to keep me protected and secure in all my ways. I pray for these same blessings upon my loved ones, that they too may walk in the fullness of life that is found in you. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come into agreement, lifting up one another in faith and intercession. Almighty God, pour out your favor and blessing upon us as we seek to walk in obedience to your will. Strengthen us to run the race set before us with perseverance and purpose, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. 
Lead us and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, empowering us to be bold witnesses for your kingdom wherever we go. In the name of Jesus, we declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned. Let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.